Hello, and welcome to the sales training video for Strictly Plumbers. In this training video, I'm going to show you how you can master the art of sales for plumbers, how you can turn a small plumbing job and take that small plumbing job and turn it into a bigger plumbing job. Okay, and how you can turn drain cleaning into a repipe. This is what you're going to learn in this video. The sales training video is strictly for plumbers and nobody else. So let's jump right in. All right. So again, this is the sales training strictly for plumbers. I'm going to show you guys how to get more sewer repairs, more repipes, and basically uh, make more money with plumbing. Okay. <clears throat> so if your sales suck, this is the right video for you. Okay, um, if you've never been trained before, um, this is a video that you never definitely want to be watching. And some of you may think that your sales suck, and so you have that mindset. So we're going to shake that today, and I'm going to show you guys how you can master the art of sales for plumbers, okay? Even if you haven't sold huge jobs before, uh, without coming off as a pushy salesman to homeowners, you know what I'm saying? Um, even if your plumbing skills aren't prestige, I'm going to show you guys how you can sell bigger jobs. So why should you listen to me? Well, I have 15 years plumbing experience. I, I was a plumber. I figured out how to basically generate $50,000 a month, and it was by turning small plumbing jobs into bigger plumbing jobs. Um, after being a plumber for so long, I became a salesman and <clears throat> excuse me, it was normal for me to hit anywhere between 95 and $125,000 per month with a formula. Okay. I'm going to show you uh, exactly how I can do this for you too and how you're going to learn the same skill set. Um, I was also a skill, uh, training manager. Okay. And we were able to generate an extra $300,000 per month. Um, by implementing certain skills and formula into the sales strategy. All right. So I do have experience as a regional training manager in a plumbing company. And so that's my background. It's not just lead generation. So I'm going to show you guys how you can do this and you can share this video with your employees. And anytime that somebody needs sales training for plumbers, show them this video. So I'm going to show them how to make more money and I'm going to show them how, you know, they're going to make more money in your, their pockets. So that means more money for you a lot more. So these are things that are must. There's things that you, you know, sometimes do, but these things are a must. Um, and it all comes back to customer service, like calling your customer while you're in route. When they hear your voice, that personal touch um, is a little more warm when you arrive on site and they recognize your voice. Make an effort um, to make a great first impression. Within the first five seconds, they're going to basically, uh, <laughs> you know, judge you, <laughs> whether you're ugly, good-looking, skinny, fat, tall, short, whatever it is. You know, in the first five seconds, you really want to give a really good impression. So you really also want to let like, the customer get to know you. So it's not just about you telling them about plumbing, but if you let them get to know you a little bit, you'll make more money, okay? Um, the customers must like you. So let them get to know you and um, tell them something to let them get to like you, okay? And uh, also the customers must trust you. So like, know, and trust. These are three things that you need to do Whenever you're on a plumbing sales call, you need to get the customer to like you and trust you. And you start by letting them get to know you. The way you can get them to like you is mention things that are relevant to something that they like. If you see that they like the Dodgers, then you want to bring up the Dodgers. If you see that um, they like the New York Jets, maybe you want to bring up the New York Jets. I think you get the idea will make them like you. And then the way you get them to trust you is by educating them. You already know your plumbing sales and your plumbing skills. So by educating the 
homeowner on plumbing in general, they will respect you a little more and they will trust you more when you teach them. So teach them about plumbing and that's how they will trust you. So I'm going to show you guys how you can plant your seeds, water these seeds and make it flower. Okay. In the beginning, you really want to mention uh, monthly payment plans very casually. Don't come off as a salesman, but you know, um, always have that in your back pocket or up your sleeve um, and drop, just drop a little seed in the beginning. Like, Hey, no big deal. We have uh, low monthly payment plans, you know, and just keep going, mention some other stuff. Don't make the situation awkward, but just drop that seed in there so we can make it grow. So here we have four different personalities, okay? We're gonna uh, touch base on this a little tiny bit. There's generally four different personalities and depending on what type of person they are, will tell you how you need to treat them. So the red, these people are self-motivated, self-motivated, driven to succeed, okay? They're often called bossy. So these people are usually the bosses. The way you're gonna win them over is by basically having something really awesome or that's, that's, that is gonna stand out from everybody else. They like that kind of stuff, okay? Um, they're very similar to the blue personality, which uh, they're, they basically love to have fun life of the party they enjoy meeting new people and these people are really friendly so think about these people now compare it to a green a green person these people are researchers they're very analytical they do a lot of research before they make a decision think of somebody in your life or you do you know somebody that is, has a green personality yes right think of somebody else that has a red personality two different people right? And you know how to see that in them. Well, the yellow person, uh, these people love to help others, like the hippies, you know? Um, they just love helping other people. So when you spot what type of person they are, you can know how to treat them, and that way they'll like you more. So if you run into a red personality color, you basically want to match their, their energy and um, basically run with their energy and they're that's how you win those guys over okay um the blue personalities what you want to do with these guys is have something really cool for them like you know going from the water heater to the tankless water heater they like that kind of stuff okay they like the fancy stuff the green personalities these are the hardest guys to close okay these guys here with the way you're going to close them is by giving them numbers data they want to hear information. They will read a ton of stuff. So if you can educate them, it'll be easier for them to make a decision. So those analytical type of people that um, are slow to make decisions and they want to do some more research and get more estimates, the way you're going to win them over is by educating them. Okay. The yellow personalities, these people are usually super friendly. It's all about helping people. So if you come off like you're here to help and you love helping people and you're going to help this person and you help everybody else, they're going to love you for that. Okay. So these people here, these hippies, these uh, <laughs> really nice folks, you want to basically come off as help. I'm here to help. I love helping people and you'll win them over. So I just wanted to touch base on four different personality colors and how to treat them so that you can win them over. You may want to watch this part again, just so you can um, really take in what I'm telling you. I went through each color real quick and explained who they are, and then I went through and explained how you can win them over. So if you need to press pause or rewind and watch this again, I recommend you do this because you'll start to see different personality colors and different people. Right now, can you think of a personality color like a yellow? somebody that just loves people and they even put themselves last. Maybe that's you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But can you think of another person with a green personality? So those more analytical, right? They want to read a bunch of stuff and get different estimates and they're slow to make decisions, not because they're slow, but because they want to, you know, basically make the right decisions. So they take a little longer, right? You know, these types of people in your life recognize that treat them a certain way and you'll win them over 
watch this section again, okay? I'm gonna move forward now. So I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why customers say no to plumbers. And if you can get over these reasons, you'll be able to get past these. So first of all, they're afraid of you because they think you're a salesman. So don't come off like so much like a salesman. That's why you gotta get let them get to know you so they can like you and trust you, right? Don't come off so much like a salesman. Uh, be an expert advisor. Just teach these people. Uh, it's really important that you get them to like you because then they'll trust you. And then when they trust you, they'll listen to you, right? And the, another one is going to be afraid of making a mistake. That's another reason plum, uh, customers will say no to plumbers. You know, we are all afraid to make a mistake. So the way you're going to get around that with homeowners is um, you need to cover your butt. You know, make sure you hit uh, all of the, like, warranties and guarantees that comes with whatever it is that you're installing because they're afraid of it not working or breaking down like a tankless water heater. If it's going to have bad maintenance, it's going to cost them, um, you know, service calls for troubleshooting, get that stress out of their head. And um, you will basically relieve this issue of them being afraid of making a mistake. Okay. Um, another reason they'll say no to plumbers is they're afraid to be lied to. This is a big one. Uh, people have had this happen to them in the past, and people have lied to you too, right? So um, you got to really win over the customer by letting them get to know you and trust you. That's how you're going to get around this part here. Okay, so you, you could either do it in the front or you could do it in the back. You win people over in the front. Don't don't wait so much to do it in the back and finally be friendly. Just come off awesome in the front and they'll like you for the rest of the service call. Okay. Um, another one is they're afraid of incurring debt, right? They're always afraid of how much the plumber's gonna cost. I can't afford it. I'm afraid of that. So make sure you give massive value versus the cost. That's how you're gonna get around this, how you're gonna get around people that hey, I don't want to do that repipe because that's a lot of money. Well, the way you're gonna get around that idea is make sure that you give them massive value. So let's say this uh, main line keeps backing up all the time. Start talking about how it affects their life. Hey, you gotta have us here, the plumber here. It's costing you money to take money, uh, time off work. It's stressing out your family, your kids can't shower. Tell them, remind them of all the bad and then tell them what it, your solution is gonna do and talk about the benefits and the benefits of, benefits of the benefits. And what I mean by that is like, hey, you're gonna have new pipes and you don't have to stress anymore. The benefit of that benefit is your family, you don't have to worry about any type of like emergencies, any sewage backing up. So it's peace of mind. That's what the benefit of having a benefit of getting a repipe. You, I hope I make myself clear on that. Explain more value versus the cost. If they're worried about the cost, that's because you haven't given them enough value. So focus on what the value that they're gonna get and that number won't seem so high to them in their brain, okay? Number five is fear of losing face. That means they're gonna be embarrassed. They're afraid of being embarrassed. Uh, make sure that you uplift the customers. Some people are a little more shy so don't, uh, you know, some people feel bad that they can't afford the plumbing bill, right? So the way you get around this is that you have empathy for them. You, the way you can do this is putting yourself in their shoes and really um, adding that personal conversation in there that will win them over. That's how you're going to get around this. Number six is they're afraid of the unknown, right? They don't know the product and they don't really know you. So they are scared of buying this repipe for seven, $8,000. So the way you sell the best is gonna be by educating, all right? That's a really good way to sell, it's by educating. Not the crazy corny stuff, just educating the customer. It will change a lot of the sales process. Educate about the features and also educate about the benefits. Understand that those are two different things. The features and the benefits, like a tankless water heater. The features of that is that it's endless water. The benefits is that 
if you have six kids or five kids, you're not going to run out of hot water. You understand how the features and the benefits work. So in your back, in the back of your mind, when you're talking to the customer, talk about the features, talk about the benefits and also the benefits of the benefits. So going back to that, I'm going to touch base real quick on that real fast is the benefits of having that tankless is you're not going to run out of hot water. What's the benefits of that? Well, your family can take all showers back to back and it's all good. So you dig a little deeper in explaining your situation and the sales. It works really well. You save the customer's pains and their problems and their struggles. That's how you do it. Okay. Number seven is fear of bad past experience. Okay. Um, here, let's see here. They've been burned out before, right? Um, maybe they've been burned out by another plumber and this is how you get around them. Um, you know, especially older people, they've been around a little longer, right? So they've experienced a little more bad experiences. And the way you get around that is again, going back to trust the way you tr let them trust you or make them trust you is get them to like you. And how are you going to do that? By letting them get to know you. So you kind of got to create conversations and, and that's be so mute or, you know, only focused on work. You got to touch, uh, you got to connect with these people somehow. You got to make a connection and make them smile and make them laugh. And it's going to basically change their whole perspective of who you are and how you're going to help them instead of charge them a bunch of money. Okay. So some people are prejudiced towards plumbers. Uh, someone made them prejudiced towards plumbers in the past. So let's say like, you know, the neighbor is over here saying, oh, I can do that for cheap. I can do a, a lot less expensive. Um, people make them prejudiced towards you. So the way you do that is you explain the warranties and you explain the contractor's license, right? If something happens, there's a flood, the insurance is going to have your back. Can the handyman do that? No. Can the neighbor do that? Definitely not. Right. So that's how you get around this situation. Number nine is they grew up thinking it was wrong. Some people just grew up thinking it's bad to spend a lot of money on water or they grew up thinking it's bad to do a certain thing. So they have this thing stuck in their head like, oh, I would never pay $6,000 for a tankless water heater. I, I've been doing my water heater for $1,000 or 1200 bucks in the last 20 years, right? They just need to get educated on how tankless is a different solution, right? So they just need to get educated. They may not think that spending that much money on a tankless is worth it because they don't know the benefits and the features. And you need to uh, basically educate them on that to win them over and sell that tankless. All right. Number 10, fear because they, the words that you say. Okay. This is the last one here out of number 10, even but we still have more to get into here. The words are either going to be positive or negative. Be careful what you tell these people and the energy that you put out. Watch what you say. There's not only value in what you say, but there's value in what you don't say. So prime example would be drain cleaning and you need to get the camera in there to see what's wrong with the main line to see if you can find some roots so you can dig it up and do a repair and maybe install a liner, maybe get a change order and dig up the front yard or maybe get another change order and start digging in the street up to the city sewer lateral and get that encroachment permit sit with the tra traffic control there's a lot of power and change orders so be careful how you treat the customer and the words that come out of your mouth make sure they're positive not negative right but the way you're going to get all those change orders is really by saying the right words so it all starts in the beginning when you're drain cleaning and if you tell them if the line is clear, the water's going down, they're gonna start writing you a check for whatever you told them it's gonna be right then and there. So before you tell them it's draining, get the camera and see why it was backed up and then show them why it was backed up and start there. Um, if you can get money for the camera, do it. But if, um, let's say, <clears throat> they don't want to spend an extra 150 bucks for the sewer camera inspection and you walk that, you let it go, 
I recommend just getting the camera in there. And because if you find roots, there's more of a reason there for them to fix that. You can tell them their pipe is broken and it needs to be repaired. But if you're, uh, you know, allowing a hundred and fifty dollar service call for a sewer camera inspection to stop that whole process, there could be gold on the other side of that sewer camera inspection. But if the, you know, if your fee is a little too expensive for them to do it, I would recommend just putting the camera in there. And if you find something, if you find some gold, it gives you a bigger reason to sell ethically okay so the sewer camera inspection is a dance with the customer if you can get money for it cool but don't let that customer walk away without a sewer camera inspection maybe break it down like halfway price and then maybe free but don't just walk away without um, doing a sewer camera inspection on a main line no bad words okay I'm gonna show you guys some bad words that stress out customers um, and bad words that maybe you won't like as well, like estimate. When you tell them you're gonna give them an estimate, that's exactly what you're gonna give them. There's a difference between getting a contract and an estimate. So just erase the word estimate from your vocabulary when you're talking to the client. Replace that word with paperwork, okay? Whenever you're gonna say estimate, just replace it with pa paperwork, all right? As soon as you say, hey, I'm gonna write you an estimate, they're gonna say, yep, I'm getting three estimates. So just say, let me get that paperwork, right? The next um, word not to say is sell or sold, right? Replace that word with helped. So instead of saying, hey, I sold this water heater to the neighbor, you could say, I helped the neighbor replace this water heater. It just sounds way better. So keep the word sell and sold out of the vocabulary as well. Another word that people don't like is contract, right? Replace that word with agreement or paperwork. As you know, like if you get a cell phone contract, it's like two years and it just sounds horrible. Contracts like kind of suck, right? Nobody really loves them. So replace that word with agreement or paperwork. It's gonna help you a lot. Another one is cost or price. These are bad words to people subconsciously as well. You need to replace those words with invest or agreement, right? So instead of saying this water heater is going to cost you $2,000, you would say this water heater is an investment of $2,000, right? So it, it just sounds a lot better. Um, there's a lot of psychology behind all this stuff. So I'm not going to get too deep into that. I'm just going to get right down to the meat and potatoes and tell you what to replace the words with like buy people don't like to buy stuff but they'd love to own it so it's like are you going to buy this water heater or wouldn't you love to own this water heater you see how you're getting the same point across but you're switching the words around you got to do the same thing now here's the main one it's draining if you're going to main sewer line and it's backed up and if as soon as they see the water's going down they're writing the check so when they ask you you don't want to lie about it that's not good. This is training for ethical sales training, not shady sales training. So you can tell customers that it's going down slow. Let them know you're still working on it. Don't let them write the check so quick. Get that camera in there. Don't just do a pop and go. Let them know that there's something wrong with the main line and you need to figure out what it is. There's a big deal, okay? So I'm going to show you guys how to master the art of selling a ton of miscellaneous plumbing. How you can go to a call where they've got one angle stop that's leaking and how you can sell the rest of the angle stops to the entire house, like all 20 of them. Okay, this is how you do it. You got to do a plumbing inspection and come up with a report that says good, fair, or poor. All right, and then you put it on a list with immediate concerns or a watch list items. So when you're doing these um, plumbing inspections, you can do them in so many different ways. Some people make them come off a little creepy and homeowners don't like it. So they sometimes think that you're digging for more work. So the way to get around that issue of a mindset is, you know, don't, don't make them feel like you're looking for more work. So Make them feel like you're helping them and you want to make sure that there's no other hidden leaks somewhere else. 
also if you know if they have a really huge house like let's say it's a big estate and you're on the west wing don't be trying to go over to the east wing you know it's going to seem weird to them but if you need to then just tell them hey i need to understand your plumbing system i need to evaluate the whole thing kind of like a doctor would so that's another way to explain why you need to get into the other rooms you know and while you're there, make a mental note of everything. Look at the faucets, look at the angle stops, look at the drains really fast. And if you can't get into the other rooms, at least do a plumbing inspection in the kitchen. Like for example, if you get called out to um, a kitchen drain that's backed up, inspect that faucet, inspect the angle stops, inspect everything in that kitchen and write it down. Come up with a list of immediate concerns and a watch list items. So let's say they have one angle stop that's leaking, but they have maybe three more that got some corrosion and the rest of they're just as old, but they are not showing that, you know, bad signs. Well, you would separate the two here and this is where you would come up with a monthly payment plan and break it down. So for example, let's say uh, just for round numbers, let's say you were to install, you know, a whole bunch of, um, angle stops and let's just say you came up with a two thousand dollar bill and let's say you were to finance that in a hundred and you know one year zero interest so you got to have monthly payment plans available to your plumbing company like be able to offer low monthly payment plans to customers so you grab that two thousand dollars and you split it up into 12 monthly payments that's 166 bucks that's a lot better than two thousand dollars right now people will take that Trust me, if they say no to the 2000 bucks, say what about $166 a month? Would that help your situation? So very important, It's you can come up with a really simple list and close them on the spot. Very persuasive with low monthly payment plans. Do the math before and you, know, you even pitch this so that when you walk in, you know the numbers, 166 bucks. And have that in the back of your mind or write it down somewhere so that when they say no to your estimate, right, you pop off with this here information. Of, what about 166 bucks a month? Would that help your situation? A lot of people say yes, you'd be shocked. So you get less estimates and more sales, okay? That's how you turn a small job into a bigger job. Using the low monthly payment plans, knowing the dollar amount by just simply doing the math. If it's a $5,000 job, do the math. What's it going to cost in five years? What's it going to cost in one year? And then go you have write those two numbers down and go and pitch it. Don't wait to see how, you know, how much it's going to cost after we run your credit. Don't talk like that. Just have those numbers ready and let them know it'll vary between 20 or 30 bucks, depending on their credit. No big deal. It'll take 15 minutes and we'll figure it out. But you can expect about $166 a month. People like to hear that stuff instead of $2,000 right now, okay? So you gotta be like a doctor, okay? Like, do you question the doctors? For example, if you have the chicken pox and it's clear that you have the chicken pox, are you going, yeah, I should get a second opinion. Give me an estimate. No, you're not telling the doctor that. You're gonna take your medicine for the chicken pox and it is what it is. So you need to put your mindset as a plumber that you're like a doctor. If you tell these people that the main line is broken, they need to do something about it. You need to have the mindset, the authority, and the voice to basically make that happen. Don't ask them. Tell them this is going to happen. Okay? Don't ask them. Tell them. That's a big deal. All right? You're the doctor. You're the one prescribing. You're the one diagnosing. You're the professional. Okay? I'm gonna, and now I'm going to teach you how to master the art of selling major repipes and huge jobs from like snaking drains to repipes, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to master the art of closing sales in this video. It gets juicy, okay? Always offer three options. For example, um, if you go to snake a main line, okay, and they have roots, you need to give them three options. One is to do that spot repair or clean out for $2,500. You see that option at the bottom? We'll split up those $2,500 $2, into two monthly payment plans. 
five-year plan and a one-year plan. This is the bottom option there. So you see $41 a month, $208 a month. That's easier than selling $2,500 right now, right? The second option is gonna be a 5,000 sectional repair, right? Um, like let's say you dig up the, a certain part of the front yard, a little more than just a spot repair or a reroute, right? Again, go back to the five-year plan and a one-year plan. And this is how you sell the repipes. You pop off with a 10-year plan. Okay, a $10,000 repipe on a 10-year plan with you know zero interest would be $83 a month. So if they have good credit, and let's say they have like 7% interest, you can add that. Do the math beforehand and know your numbers. Write down your numbers on your estimate and go in there prepared with these numbers. Don't try to write these numbers at the table. That's another thing, get to the table. Don't be pitching in the front yard. Get the husband and wife, sit them down at a table and pitch the three options. If you go to a main sewer line, you wanna get the camera in the main sewer line, figure out where the roots are at, offer them a spot repair, a sectional repair, or a full-blown repipe, and break it down into the monthly payment plans. Let them choose. You're gonna tell people to point. Say, point at the option that fits your budget. And tell them, point. And you're gonna see how people will point at a $5,000 sectional repair for a five-year plan. They'll just point it out. You just gotta lay it out in this fashion. Again, don't wait to come up with these numbers after you run credit and see if it happens. No, 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 no. First, you walk in with the numbers, say this is around what it's gonna be, depending on your credit, it could go up or down 20 to $30. But these are um, you know, something that you can consider. And people will just choose them. So it's very important that you choose, that you always offer three options and then offer monthly payment plans and for the big ten thousand dollar repipes offer three different plans a 10-year plan the five-year plan and the one-year plan and you'll see everybody you know they pick different plans because they have different budgets and that's what you have to do is cater to their budgets and this is how you have to do it don't wait to pull their credit to figure out the numbers figure out the numbers in the van while you're writing up your estimate and go inside sit them down at the kitchen table draw out on a piece of paper these three options and make them pick something that fits their budget. Those are the magic words. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and move on here. So here I'm gonna show you how to close, alternate of choice. So this is a question with uh, two answers. So, and either one works in your favor. So for example, would you like to start today or does tomorrow work better for you? That's not asking people if they want to do it, a yes or a no. That's asking the people, do you want to do it today or does tomorrow work better for you? Because you know you can be at their house maybe 7 to 8 o'clock p.m. So instead of saying, do you want to do the job, you would say, do you want to start today or does tomorrow work better for you? It's a different positioning of closing. Another one is going to be, what works best for you? Check, cash, or credit card. If you ask them that question, they have to answer it, right? The human brain wants to answer questions. So they're gonna say, well, my credit, I can put it on my credit, right? So instead of saying, do you wanna do the job? Just say, what works best for you? Check cash or credit card. Just try it. You're gonna see the people will respond to you different. Don't just say, do you wanna do the job, okay? Um, when we perform the work, uh, we, <clears throat> will you be on site or will you give us access? So that's another way to indirectly close. So let's say you have to dig up the kitchen because that kitchen line is just messed up underneath the slab. Well, instead of saying, do you, want, are you, do you want to accept this contract? You would say, you know, when we perform the work, do you, are you going to be home? Or are you going to give us access? Because it's going to get dusty and we have to close this off. So that's another way to close. Instead of saying, do you want to do the job? You would say, when we're here doing the job, are you going to be here give it, or are you going to give us access? It's a whole different way of closing, positioning that close. Try it, okay? Write these things down. 
Okay, guys, I'm giving you the slides so you can have this. Another one is the tie down question. This is a question that at the end of the sentence it demands a yes. So it's a way to get a yes, isn't it? Um, like <clears throat> this is how, the way you can do this in plumbing is it's like, hey, you don't want another flood, do you? It's like, no, that demands a no, right? Um, you want to save money on your plumbing, don't you? That's going to demand a yes, right? Um, if I gave you a coupon, would you want it? That's going to demand a yes. There's certain ways you can position questions to demand a yes. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, that was one, wasn't it? <laughs> I'll do it again. <clears throat> so there's ways to get people to say yes and you have to position the words but here's the thing don't do it more than two times in one hour or people will catch on so if you say you know do you want to save money you want to save money don't you they're going to say yes and <laughs> don't do it too much just do it no more than twice an hour okay i hope you guys catch on to this this is pretty good stuff if there are questions that demand a yes all right like do you need a plumber that's going to be reliable um, or non-reliable? You want somebody that's going to give you a guarantee, don't you? That demands a yes. You want to have a plumber that's going to give you a good price, don't you? That demands a yes. So I hope you guys wrap your head around that. It's pretty powerful if you do it right. Another one is uh, the porcupine question. This is where you ask, answer a question with a question. I know it's kind of sounds funny, the porcupine question, but the way I figure is like, if, if you were to grab a porcupine and I throw it at you, you're not gonna wanna catch it. You're gonna throw it right back at me. So <clears throat> when people ask you, when can you do the work? The way you answer that question is, when would you like us to start? That's the correct way. See how I, you add, make it with a question, right? When can you guys do the work? That's a common question. Just tell them, when would you like us to start? And they'll tell you tomorrow morning. Stop talking, shake their hand, make them sign the agreement, okay? Do you have, loan, do you have monthly payments? When they ask you that or they ask about those monthly payment plans, that seed that you planted, and the right way to answer that question is, would you prefer low monthly payments? They are going to say yes. Okay. I was going back to what I was just talking about earlier. Another one is when they ask you a question like, do you accept credit cards? These are all like closing questions. These are questions that people throw at you because in their brain, they've already accepted the fact that they're going to do the job and they just want to iron out the details. And sometimes we don't catch on to that stuff. So I'm telling you these things because these are common questions. These are things that I figured out over 15 years, okay? Do you accept credit cards? Well, would you like to use your Visa, MasterCard, or American Express? We accept them all. Which one do you have? They're gonna say, oh, well, I have a Visa. Great, let's go ahead and put a 10% deposit. You know, you gotta catch on to these questions that these people ask and turn them into a closing statements built out of questions like what I'm showing you guys here. When people ask you, will you be doing the work? That's because you sold them on you. So you get the way you answer that question is, would you prefer if I did the work? That's going to demand a yes. As soon as they say yes, you stick your hand out and you shake it, shake their hand and just or give them the pen and have them sign the agreement. Another one is, do you give discounts or military discounts or senior discounts? Again, they're closed. They're just looking for a discount. Just the way, right way to answer that question, as you can see, is would you like a discount? The reason I say that is because the word that's going to come out of their mouth is going to be yes. And that's when you stop talking and you start shaking hands and you start closing. Very powerful stuff here, guys. Okay, I hope you take this and retain it. Um, the art of closing a sale. You got to help customers rationalize their decision. That's how you're going to close a sale. You got to help customers eliminate procrastination. Don't let that drippy faucet go. That's how you're going to close a sale. Um, help 
customers deal with their fears and their struggles, when you give them a solution, they're going to be all over it. So help customers deal with their fears and struggles and make sure that you give the right solution for them. Make it all about them, them, them. And give them solutions for them. It's not about us plumbers and what we're going to do and what we need to do. But hey, here's a solution that you need, right? So here I'm going to talk about four different ways to close. Okay, guys, master the art of a soft close. Then you have a hard close. There's two different ways to close, but I'm going to talk about four different ways to close right now, okay? Um, four different ways to close the deal, the plumbing deal. Customer asks you a porcupine question, like do you have military discounts? That's it's, And they're done. Close that right there, okay? When um, You can also ask, do the test close? This is a really, really good one. So let's say you're walking them through a repipe, and you would say, I'm going to rip out this wall, and... We're going to go around these cabinets to do the, the, <clears throat> the repipe here for the kitchen, the hot, the cold, right? And then you tell them how much money they're going to save on the coupon that you're giving them, right? You got to have stuff like that and just say these words. Um, how do you feel about this so far? That's such a powerful question. How do you feel about this so far? Let them tell you, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have the money for it. Or, uh, yeah, this sounds really good. You're going to get a feel if they're going to close this or not. So without asking them, hey, do you want to do this job? Without asking that hard question, the soft way to ask that question is, how do you feel about this so far? Use that phrase, okay? So um, with your approval, we can start today or tomorrow. That's another way to close the deal. With your approval, we can start today or tomorrow. Don't say, uh, sign this contract. People don't like contracts, remember that, okay? With your approval, and when you say that, with your approval, we can start today. Just grab the, um, you know, if you have an iPad, pass it to them so they can sign right there. If you have a paper invoice, then grab your pen and just say, with your approval, we can start today or tomorrow. And just like reach out to them and give them the pen and paper and they'll take it from you. They're either going to say yes or no. And just get that elephant out of the room and see if you can overcome objections by giving them more value and benefits, okay? Um, or you just say, I just need your approval right here. And start handing them the pen so they can sign or give them the iPad so they can sign, okay? These are four different ways to close the deal. What about when people say no thanks? What do you do when customer tells you no thanks? Give me an estimate. Let's go over that real quick. Okay, let's go over rebuttals. Um, let me think about it. So these are three common rebuttals and I'm gonna show you how to get around them. Let me think about it. It costs too much. Can you give me an estimate, please? You hear these things all the time. So let's go over this stuff real quick. When somebody tells you, let me think about it, you need to turn that into a question and say, what would you like to think about? It's usually going to be money, right? Like, why are they, what are they going to, sometimes it's timing. Hey, they're going to go on vacation and it works better if, you know, um, you do this job while they're on vacation and two weeks from now instead of today. You know, sometimes it's something different. So if we're not asking them, they're just holding that information. So this is a very important statement or question. What would you like to think about? Is it money? Because we've got a low monthly payment plans. Is it timing? Because we can put you on our schedule now. You gotta ask them that question. Don't just give them an estimate and walk away. Another rebuttal, another you know, way they get rid of plumbers and say no to plumbers, they tell plumbers it costs too much. So a rebuttal for that is you can ask them another question. How much do you think it's worth? So let's say they have a water heater and they wanna upgrade to a tank this water heater. You go, ooh. Dang, the, the regular water heater is like a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks, two thousand bucks, whatever your install price is, twenty eight hundred bucks. But that tankless water heater is going to be like six, seven, eight thousand dollars, or maybe even more sometimes, depending on the code upgrades, right? So it costs too much. So you ask them, how much did you think this was going to cost? <clears throat> so you have to educate them on why the tankless is a little more expensive, right? Another question is. Would monthly payments help you? Just that simple question is going to help with this when they tell you it costs too much. 
You just tell them, would my low monthly payments help you? That's a rhetorical question. They're going to say yes. They're going to think yes, but what they're going to say is how much are your low monthly payment plans? That's when you pop off with that information, okay? Another one is, uh, we hear it all the time, can you give me an estimate, please? How do you get around that stuff, okay? The way you got to do is, you got to ask these people, what can I do to make this convenient for you? Just look them in the eye and just say, what would it take for you to basically, you know, have this happen and be happy about it? What would it take? Is it a lower price? Is it a different time frame? Just ask them, what would it take, like, for you to accept this type of job? And let them give you the information and turn that into a close. Okay, guys? So here's an interesting statement, and I'm wrapping it up now. When you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, that's when you will succeed. So sales is a big mindset. Um, the reason that some plumbers sell more than others is because they have an art of persuasion. They know how to talk to customers and they have this mindset that they have to sell. They have to succeed. So this statement here when you want to succeed as much as you want to breathe, that's when you will be successful. You know, that applies to men, not boys, because we have um, a family to take care of, right? So if you're watching this video and you don't have kids or children or family, this is not to go against you. What I'm telling you is that when people have more responsibilities, they will do more and they'll do what it takes. But when people don't have a lot of responsibilities, they'll do just enough. I think it's human nature. So out in the plumbing field, you know, you, what it, where is your mindset? Do you want more sales or are you just cruising? So managers, if you can train your plumbers, have weekly meetings and train their mindset so they want to succeed, and watch their life improve as they make more money, they will become more valuable in your company. Plumbers, if you're watching this, understand that the mindset is very important and you need to take good care of it, okay? <clears throat> so congratulations, you've completed the course. Um, what do you think? <laughs> um, I hope you liked it and uh, again, Thank you for watching the Strictly Plumbers sales training video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please share this with any plumbers that you have in your company anytime.